I think that the millennials will present the yin energy because I feel like a lot of the consumerist culture is a source of destruction. This is going to be a long one, huh? Yeah, you can you can drop that character whenever you like. <laughs> you don't even need you don't need to ask us for permission. That's fine. Boy, I thought I was one note. <laughs> now set down the pizza and bring some chicken. Throw it on top and make the finger licking. Guacamole meatball with cream pouring like waterfalls. Here's a little sauce. Stuff yourself with the F Plus Podcast. We've got terrible things read with enthusiasm. And in the room tonight, we've got King Lou Fernandez. The Master Chief Mojito. Bacardi Rum, Mountain Dew Energy, Half a Lime, Cement Sprigs, Crushed Ice. It's just the thing for your inner Hurragok. Jack, chick. I'm feeling the need for power, strength, and happiness in my life. And that's why I'm making best ever smoky bacon, beef, and bean chili recipe for power. Kendrick Lobstar! Add the four bundles of buckwheat, soba, noodles, basil, pistachios, shredded cheddar cheese, and red wine vinegar to the bowl of the food processor, and pulse until finely chopped. Dijon du jour! To make slime juice, you'll need cranberry juice, aloe juice, gin, lime juice, Irish cream liqueur, lime wedge, and a maraschino cherry. Whoa. (laughs) That's too much flavor. (laughs) And lemon. Streets of Rage 2 is trash can chicken. You will need trash can chicken. (laughs) (laughs) Could it get any easier? (laughs) But wait, there's... No, no, uh, no. Let it fly. Hey, F plus. Hi, hi, hello. hi. Hey, uh, hi, Jack, 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 Jack. Hi. Let me start things. Yeah, let me start things off. Yeah, you seemed worried. You seemed I'm, worried about something. No, I'm living. I'm learning to give up my worries so that I can live with a, a more intention intention-based uh energy and authenticity wow that's excellent so so you i'm assuming you have a a, a new guru new guru now i mean I, I i refer to them as as a mentor and okay. a healer okay. oh okay that's great that's great mm-hmm. so uh what has your mentor uh been feeding you um mostly cocktails from video games Great. Well, that makes sense. That makes sense in the confines of this episode, because here's the thing that I got for y'all, is that before we hit record, we were looking at a uh, a, a document from Smallest Sasquatch called Millennials Learn to Cook with Fandom Recipes, which, which is so infuriating <laughs> that I needed to cut it with something that was differently infuriating. Um... <laughs> So uh so then I found so then I found another thing here called this is from Neil somebody we haven't heard from in a little while actually Neil's been uh Neil's been pretty regular in the comments uh we have a document from Neil called the sorcery banquet magical recipes so I think that between the two I feel like that will be the yin mm-hmm. and yang I'm not really sure which one will be which But I think that'll help us to lead a balanced life. So I want to start off here with, as mentioned, the document from Neil, The Sorcery Banquet, a gustatory gastro grimoire for domestic and dietary diabolism. (laughs) And this first section here is called Just the Preambles to McGickle Recipes. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Good. So uh, to, to that end, we are going to a website with a horrible logo. And according to the logo of this website, this website is called Plentifuel Averth. Yep, <laughs> that's correct. <laughs> yep, because that triangle is a period. Excellent. Right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So if you, I think, uh, Lou, if you'd start us off here with the instant pot mm, mm. bone broth recipe for grounding, healing, and vitality. No problem. It's delicious. Hi, my name is Aurora Mooney, and this is my delicious bone bath recipe. Nothing says fall and winter like a cozy, warming, perfectly seasoned bowl of soup. Every soup has a base broth. Why not make sure your soup and stew broth is filled with magic and healing nutrients? Why not? Yeah, what? 
This beef and chicken bone broth contains vital trace minerals and is packed with vitamins to ensure you and your family have everything you need to stay healthy. In this magical brew, you'll find more than just vitamins and minerals in its ingredients. Witches know that everything in life is filled with energy that we can work with for our highest good. That's why this bone broth recipe is perfected for Mabon, Sawin, and Yule feasts. Uh, yeah, how do you kitchen witchcraft? <laughs> Put a bunch of melatonin in some yeah. Campbell's soup, but I don't know about you. <laughs> Wondering how to turn any recipe into a spell? Just yep. like CBD. <laughs> Every ingredient that goes into your recipes has energy and a purpose, just like in spell work. I guess calories are energy, so I guess that's true, sure. There's no yeah. science in yeah. this. And I mean, you know, you don't like put put garlic in your cereal, right? There's a purpose for that. Maybe you don't. First, research and learn what magical properties each part of the spell recipe has. Then as you add each item into your recipe, state what each ingredient is for while visualizing the goal of what you're cooking. <laughs> Salt. Oh, shit. Taste. Huh. Flour, I'm making a muffin. <laughs> Butter. I declare healthiness. I declare an eclair. I'm adding salt. Ranch I dressing, because I've given up. <laughs> yeah, ranch dressing and carrots. I'm bored. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. This recipe calls for filtered water that's going to take out all the fucking the magical energies. Now you put it back in. You put it back in with the bones. It takes out all the magical oh. uh, lead and rust. This magic magical recipe is for grounding, healing, and vitality. So visualize that everyone who eats it is strong, healthy, and protected. Okay, so is it literally possible, Aurora, to make a bone broth recipe if I don't have an Instant Pot? Absolutely! What? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you, just because. Boy, maybe it is a science thing. To make bone broth in a traditional way, you'll want to cover the bones and spices in eight quarts of water. Place a lid on your stock pot. This is just ingredient stuff. And let the ingredients simmer for 12 hours. Be sure to check on and top off your broth with fresh water to make sure the bones stay covered with water. Once it's done, <laughs> season to taste with salt. You absolutely don't want to do that with the lid on. That's the wrong way to do that. Well, I don't know. Is there any sort of pressure in an instant pot? I... <laughs> <laughs> very much yes, and then very much no. <laughs> oh. So uh, so with that said, with that preamble for the instant bone broth recipe for grounding, healing, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, I think that really leads us into Chang's Frito Fritters. <laughs> <laughs> Chang's Frito Fritters and Orange is the New Black inspired recipe. <laughs> so, uh, so Dijon, <laughs> let's just skip right past the preamble here. <laughs> And uh, this is an appetizer. It's serving as 12 fritters. And uh, yeah, how do I make Chang's Frito Fritters? Yeah, here's how to make this uh, themed cuisine. Okay, so for the fritters, you're going to need one bag of Fritos. All right, got the dry. Yeah. Now time for the wet. One cup of cooked peas. <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> oh, no. Guys, we're not, we're not even 10 minutes in, okay? Oh, no. <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> yeah, got it. Yep. All right, all right. Um, time for the other wet. One cup, of, half cup of water. Interesting. Oh, yeah. Uh, vegetable oil and an egg. Okay. Uh, what? Okay. You're making quite the Frito paste here. Oh, boy. <laughs> all right. For the sauce, you're going to need four tablespoons of hoisin. Okay. Two. That's, that's what makes it that's Asian. A lot. That's a lot of hoisin <laughs> sauce. It's well, just on, hoisin. There's more. It changes. Oh, there's, there's also. Two scant tablespoons of sesame oil. Huh. Oh, what the fuck? Now it's just going to no. taste like sesame oil. <laughs> no, 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 scant. no, no. You, you, you fill up the tablespoon with sesame oil, and then you go, nah, uh, uh. <laughs> yeah, it, it's just the essence of two tablespoons of sesame oil. <laughs> just... <laughs> What? Why? I guess you pour it back in the bottle and then put the. I don't know. That doesn't make any I, sense. Yeah, it's like it's like when you uh, like waft the just, vermouth. Over just like right, right. Yeah, right. Two <laughs> tablespoons, but not. Yeah. Uh, two tablespoons of mirin. Mm. Okay. Okay. So, so it's gonna be real sweet. 
Yeah, yep. no, it's not. It's going to taste like sesame oil still. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, if that was like four liters of poison sauce, maybe that would be a sufficient amount to cover up the flavor of sesame oil. Someone's taking a big breath and is like, oh, I smell scant sesame oil. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, my friend. Too much sesame oil. And two tablespoons of sambal olek. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah. Pretty sweet. Mm-hmm. All right. You want the instructions? Yeah, absolutely. All right. Combine all in a bowl and stir. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> With intention. Yeah, I want the wait, instructions. Wait, all of it? Wait. That's for this sauce. Oh. oh, okay. That's just for the sauce. All right. Well, no, because this is now for the fritter sauce. Wait, what? These, these are the instructions for the fritter sauce. Combine all ingredients in a bowl. Stir. Refrigerate while cooking fritters. Okay. Okay. And then how do we make the fritters? All right. It's for the fritters. This is important. Yep. Open the Fritos bag just a little to release the air. Oh, you have okay. to let the Fritos breathe. <laughs> Do I need to decant my Fritos? <laughs> I mean, you rolling pins. Yeah, you want scant chips. Fritos smell. <laughs> Essence of Fritos. <laughs> oh, the Frito. <laughs> Keep going, keep going. Okay. Yeah. Pour crumbs into a bowl and add a half cup of water. Ew. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's... You want... Okay. All right. you want something that looks a little bit like dog food at this point. That yeah. looks like vomit. Add a cup of cooked peas, well, one that egg. looks more like dog food. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and mash it all together with your hands. Form it All right. Microwave on high for two minutes. How about stupid? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Really? When you said fritters, I was like, there's no way you're going to put that in the microwave. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking awesome. Au contraire. <laughs> you fool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, boy. That's how they become fritters. Yeah. <laughs> uh, tw- 12. You have to cook them through so you don't get salmonella. It, you know, it's an appetizer, so they're small. Well, they can't be. They can't be that small because then you can just put you. You can just do the next step, which is place them in a nonstick skillet. Actually, it says one bag <laughs> of Fritos. So, like, what if I just bought the big family bag? One yeah, family well, that's bag the, of Fritos. That's, that's the thing. Like the page that we're on, right? Like, actually has like some photos of the thing. And so, somebody out there that posts on geeks who eat, ugh, like, was watching. Orange is the New Black saw some prison food being served and was like, well, I need to cook that shit. Yeah. Well, I need more green in my diet. I, you know, I, prison food? All right, let's do in it. In another life, I worked in a prison very briefly. And I think if someone made these, even the prisoners would be like, what the fuck is this? We're not eating that. Where'd you get a microwave? Uh, Kendrick. Sure. Uh, I could use some money. Sure. Can't we all? Yeah. Do you think you could introduce me to a tea that will get me loaded, I guess? Sure, I can certainly try. This is the Moneymaker Spiced Mint Iced Tea Potion Recipe from Aurora Mooney. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, boy. McGickle Potions just got a modern twist. Iced potions! We've got a stunning mint Moneymaker Ice Potion that'll bring money your way. Whether you need a little bit of extra cash or you want to bring success to your business, this Moneymaker Ice Potion will lower your temperature and increase your bank account. Hmm? Ice potions are so lit in this witch's yeah. book of shadows. Wow, Over they're you. fire emoji, fire emoji 100. A lot of exclamation points here. <laughs> cool, refreshing, and McGickle, this undercover spiced mint tea will change your financial life. Undercover? What is an ice potion? Glad you asked. An ice potion is a fun new way to brew and drink McGickle potions, elixirs, and tonics. Plentiful Earth likes to make our McGickle lives fun, and this is a great way to make the mundane McGickle and the McGickle extra McGickle. I also have not described how to make it iced. Nope, sure haven't. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, but how do you ice it? Well, I'm glad you asked. So... So, so okay, so witches have existed for thousands and thousands of years, yeah. and they yeah. only recently, within the last five years, discovered ice? Yes. Yeah. Well, you know what happened I mean, is yeah, their money, the their money ran out. So they had oh, to. Oh, I see. Yeah. I will also suggest that you guys click that and look at it. That, that does not seem like a good tea. 
No, 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 no. And so with that, uh, we're going to be going over to the Geeky Chef, uh, recipes inspired by movies, books, music, television, and video games. Mm -hmm. Uh, And uh, this is Romulan Ale. (sighs) Okay, so uh, my only word, the only sentence of my preamble is going to be, you guys know I have a cookbook coming out soon, right? (laughs) Good. That's all. Anyway. uh, Okay, so here's how to make Romulan Ale. This is a thing that you drink. Okay, first of all, an ounce of blue curacao. Okay. Huh. Then rum, specifically 150 proof rum. Oh, God. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> all right. So now that you got those two things, you're going to need an ounce of cream de cacao blue cream soda to taste. <laughs> that has to be a missing <laughs> return, character return there. <laughs> there has to be multiple. <laughs> no way. <Nope. laughs> Cream de cacao, blue cream. So why can't I find this when I search for it? Yeah, <laughs> weird. It can't be. It has to be two different things. Blue cream de cacao. Someone soda. just absolutely ripped out of their mind at the alcohol company. It's like, I know, I got an idea. I need a whole shitload of blue. <laughs> okay. Yep. All um, right. Entire. So assuming that a line break was supposed to be there, cream to cacao, and then cream soda. Mm -hmm. So then uh, you're going to need some bitters. Uh, So specifically three to five drops of orange or chocolate bitters. They're the same thing. Um, Yep. (laughs) So this just tastes like a drinkable chocolate orange, I guess. Uh Uh Uh-huh. I like the- It's not appealing. I like the comments. You have to to smack it on the table really hard before you drink (laughs) it. Well, it's not it's not for humans. It's for Romulans. Right. So Romulans you have to it, remember, yeah. they love awful tasting things. I like the comment on this one that says, I enjoyed it a lot because it is very helpful for all the readers. Thank you so much to share a wonderful post. I bookmarked this post for my writing. I will share this post. Best essay writing service. <laughs> wow, 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 wow. I feel like oh you shouldn't make it quite that obvious. I had Such Romulan Ale post. at the Star Trek experience in Las Vegas, and it was made by sure. Sierra Nevada. Sure. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, that makes that makes a lot of sense. Like, like, you can just, like, blue food coloring exists. Yeah. So, so I get, I get wanting to use blue curacao, and then you go like, "Oh, that's not as blue as I thought it would be." So either put food coloring in there or stop. <laughs> Cut it out. Yeah, either go all the way or don't go the any of the way. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. So there. So let's go back to the uh, magical uh, recipes because we have more uh, preambles here. I believe that everything here is from Aurora Mooney. Um, so let's go, I think, uh, I think Jack, if you'll take this one, please. Yeah. Uh, uh, this is the vegetarian pot pie for beauty, grounding, and protection. Beautiful. You got, you got a face like a crust there. How can food be magical? Can you put a spell on food? Absolutely. Magic is all about intention manifestation. Ingredients all have vibrations that lend themselves to specific intentions. So by adding specific ingredients and visualizing your intention, you can make your food magical. Hello, kitchen witches. We see you. Mm. Wow. Wow. How is this magical recipe for beauty, ground, and protection? Kitchen witchcraft is the art of empowering each ingredient's energy to work towards a specific goal. This vegetable pot pie includes ingredients that are good for beauty spells, love spells, romance spells, grounding spells, protection spells, and growth spells. Hey, I'm just wondering, and this is I'm not suspicious or anything. Do you have a keyword list you're trying to jam in here? <laughs> Vegetarian <laughs> pot pie. Are you keyword yeah. jamming, maybe, Bob? Wow. Please? Vegetarian pot oh, pie on, sir. for SERP and SEO I, purposes. I, How dare I, you? I cannot <laughs> believe that you would suggest that I created this website with that intention. So many ingredients. You act like this is connected. Manifesting it by perhaps stuffing a whole bunch of keywords in my. You act like this is connected to a shop full of absolutely random bullshit. Vegetarian, (laughs) vegetarian pot pie for long tail SEO purposes. (laughs) Boy, 
I bet you think they're trying to sell uh, jasmine flowers for $86.95, huh? Cheapest, <laughs> cheapest wow. prices, lowest prices. One pound of clothes for $52, sir? Does that sound like maybe an SEO scam to you? If not, read on. Guess you don't know. How do I use food as a spell? <laughs> Each ingredient below has its magical properties listed next to it. Apparently, I don't spell it McGickle anymore. As you prepare them and add them to your recipe, pick one of its attributes and visualize how it plays a role in your overall goal. For example, if you are making this pot pie to ground crazy energies after a fight, start by... What? 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 What What are you talking about? (laughs) Yeah, you know... The, all those times that you get in a fight and you're like, I, this this energy is too crazy. I need to make a pot pie. All those. Am I a Final Fantasy character? <laughs> yeah. I got to go to a cutscene. I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about a Final Fantasy character, Lemon, but you're definitely a cartoon character. Well, yeah, I don't know. We argued know. about the debt and the credit cards, and then she just started making a pie. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I got crazy energy now. <laughs> Start by seeing any everyone who eats the pot pie as being relaxed and grounded. As you dice the carrots, state that the carrots are for grounding, and visualize oh everyone God. who eats the pot pie as being relaxed and grounded. These carrots are grounded! Ground everyone. <laughs> You're not going to see a friend this weekend, carrots. Never mind that the time passing will let everyone chill out after the ridiculous fight after... This is stupid. Yeah, you don't know, like Dale no, Long and Dix to take yeah, a pot it's, to make Sorry, a I forgot to lend credence to the pie having energy powers well i mean what happens if you make the pie and then you get crazy then you can throw the pie as as you chop the onion state that it's for banishing negativity visualize everybody who eats the pie as being filled with positive energy do this for each ingredient pray that they don't have diarrhea dom your family with pie As I add this dry time, I add this for beauty, happiness, strength, and protection. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, she she mentions uh, carrots are for fertility, grounding, and romance. Mm, yeah. This store-bought <laughs> crust is for convenience and... <laughs> <laughs> you know uh actually so, so jack check real quick uh i know that we were trying to not read the recipes from the sorcery banquet but you know seeing as how it is sort of like on point i wanted to ask you yeah right before we hit record you found a recipe for sweet smoked bacon and green bean casserole yeah uh yeah. sounds great sounds great apparently it just has three ingredients it does it's really simple to make Um, Mm -hmm. and you are going to have to fire up your smoker for this because you are going to need to smoke the bacon. I have to smoke my own bacon. You have to smoke your own bacon. bacon. Right. Mm -hmm. Correct. Right. And you have to smoke that bacon with intention. Right. Um, yeah, but so the ingredients, so there's the bacon, right? And we, we, we need, we only need 12 ounces of bacon diced. Okay. Then there's three 14 and a half ounce cans of cut green beans. Cans? cans. Okay. That's a lot of cans. Yeah, like I could just buy the green beans. No, you okay. have to use right, the canned mind. green beans. Use the cans, you then. have to make your own bacon, but you can't cut your own green beans. <laughs> yeah, wait, wait a minute. Yeah, I smoke my own bacon, but I buy canned green beans? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> this is a weird You're grocery store. You're not a store. farmer. <laughs> <laughs> and then for maximum McGickle energy, you're going to want yep. to add a cup of creamy French dressing. <laughs> <laughs> Magic. <laughs> so, and that's it. So what you're going to do, so what you're going to do, Lemon, right? You're going to combine these ingredients together into a casserole dish. And then you're going to put the casserole into the smoker and smoke your casserole. Oh. <laughs> this is such a wet dish. <laughs> That casserole isn't gonna like cook off any of that liquid. Do you think? Oh, do you think she you leans think over and goes like, reduced? "Can you can you smell the 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 French dressing in there?" Mm. <laughs> oh my the, god! You know what the secret ingredient is? Intention. <laughs> I intend to put this in the garbage. So 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 I didn't read the instructions before, but I discovered that one cup of creamy French dressing may not be enough. Ooh. You're actually okay. supposed to pour the French dressing over the top until halfway up the sides. Oh my gosh. Okay. All right. Well anyway, so so Swimming seeing as how French we dressing. are uh, sort of in the like sort of like baked goods mm. kind of kind of section. That's that's perfect because now I'm gonna go to the gluttonous geek. 
thegluttonousgeek.com. Oh. Indulge your fandom. Uh, there's a whole bunch of preamble. We're going to skip past all that. But Dijon. Yeah. Okay. So I'm not going to. You tell me what your what your meal is called. No, I think I think you need to tell him. <laughs> all right. All right. Yeah, I'm sorry. Dijon. Mm-hmm. Will you please teach us all, all of us, all of us together in this podcast, how to make Deadpool's sweet and salty chorizo chimichangas? <laughs> oh. <laughs> and the dirty ring pop martini, obviously, right? You want that yeah, too? Yeah, yeah. You're gonna have to have the dirty ring pop martini. I said all of that yeah. without dry heaving. <laughs> yeah, you did. So I'm very proud of you. <laughs> the perfect pairing. Yeah, you you want the preamble or just the recipe? No, no, no I just obviously. need the recipe, please. Oh, you don't want you don't want to hear my good jokes? I got uh, great jokes. No, if you have any, sure. But let's <laughs> assuming that you don't. <laughs> <laughs> Go fine. Well, what will you do with leftover pineapple juice and olive juice? You may ask. You got booze, don't you? Make a pina colada, or even the following cocktail that Deadpool inspired my husband to make: the Dirty Ring Pub Martini, That's which cool. is it's a martini. <laughs> well i mean it's so it's well it's it's a vodka martini uh yeah. and it's got two parts vodka and two and half a part martini rosso i don't know what that is <laughs> <laughs> do i not understand what the what a dirty ring pop is it feels like it's a deadpool joke gonna, uh, not yeah. that i don't trust this doc but i'm gonna open up an incognito tab and write that right, dirty fair, ring fair, pop fair enough fair enough uh, yeah, no, just because you're saying it's just a martini. I don't think you're right about that. If you just go through the, not... the the four ingredients here. Oh, but it has all the normal. It has, you know, the, the two parts of vodka, half part of martini rosso. Oh, just put a red martini in there. Yeah. Um, uh, half part of olive juice. Uh, and, you know, that the half the half part of grenadine. <laughs> oh, uh, that's so fucking oh, gross. My <laughs> what? Oh, my God. <laughs> what? Yeah, you know. Oh, my God. Olives and gross. grenadine. <laughs> And a mm-hmm. sweet, sweet olives. Olive vermouth and grenadine. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to go really well with your trees of chimichangas. Oh. <laughs> wow. Gosh. Wow. Okay, awesome. So that's yep. the starter. I'm just going to set that to the side. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll drink that later. <laughs> hey, yeah, I understand you don't want to drink oh, all of all. I'm on my fourth chimichanga. Why do I feel awful? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and here's, uh, here's my serving four. Uh, Deadpool sweet and salty chorizo chimichangas. Of course, you're going to need one and a half pounds of pork chorizo, one sweet onion, okay, two 15 ounce cans of dark red kidney beans, a 15 ounce can of pinto beans. Okay. We're up to okay. over a pound <laughs> of beans. <laughs> That's a lot of beans. You really want to fart. You really, really need to fart. <laughs> so okay, many okay beans. got it. <laughs> Nearly three pounds of beans. Can, can I. Can I use my own, like, you know, I have beans just in the house. Can I just reconstitute those? Absolutely not. No. Oh, okay. No. <laughs> That's so... <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Go Salt. Go Salt. Cuban. Uh, 20-ounce can of pineapple tidbits. What? What's wrong with your tongue? What the fuck is a tidbit? <laughs> Pineapple tidbit. <laughs> Beans and pineapple. <laughs> Sounds good so far. We thought the other one was prison food. Oh. <laughs> 2.25 ounce can of sliced black olives. Might as well not be to bother. Wait, it's still going to be lost to the sea of beans. <laughs> pineapple. Use right. the scent of olives. No, because because the, the olive juice is part of the cocktail. Right, right, right. Because they're using black olive juice. <laughs> Go on. Four tortillas. <laughs> Lots of cooking oil. Okay, but you have a pound and a half of chorizo. I don't think you're lacking for oil here. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a six pound six pound recipe in a traditional <laughs> recipe you'd have the oil higher this would be adding the oil to the tortillas yeah that's the problem Lou <laughs> that's the issue lots of oil it was in the wrong spot <laughs> wait 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 so this was three pounds of beans and a pound and a half of chorizo <laughs> Plus other yeah. shit, and this makes four servings. Right, exactly. <laughs> I'm hungry, man. <laughs> what, <is laughs> what? What else? 
uh, to make it healthy, a half a head of lettuce shredded. Yeah, appreciate that. Mm-hmm. Appreciate that. It's just a half a head of it, though. Let's not oh, go. Nice. Let's not go crazy. <laughs> And to make it unhealthy, you get a jar of queso dip. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, it's a a pot of vegetable oil now. (laughs) No, it's just a bed of shredded lettuce. You don't have to eat it. (laughs) Okay, good, good. Uh yeah, that it's it says that halfway through the instructions you're supposed to make yourself a pina colada. I uh-huh. guess <laughs> in then, general, like unrelated to this, <laughs> make yourself a pina colada and then make yourself a, mar- a dirty ring pop martini immediately after that. Drink both yeah. of them. Drain a can of <laughs> olives into the cocktail shaker. <laughs> <laughs> Not just half part olive juice. The entire can. Yeah. Right, great. Uh, Lou, I, uh, you know, I I think that, like, uh, I know that we're a little bit out, you know, we're we're a couple years removed now from uh, peak COVID, but, like, I'm still in a bread-making kind of mood. Can we make some, uh, can we make some bread now? Well, of course, bread is the the staple we all need to have. This is my llama's bread recipe. White sandwich bread for bread machine. Again, I am Aurora Moon. It's Llama's Loaf time. <laughs> Hell yeah. Witches, you know what we're talking about. Yo, it's <laughs> Llama's Loaf time, witches! Warm, <laughs> soft, fresh from the oven, and filled with magical harvests of llamas or lugnadas. I don't know what that word is. Sure. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Homemade bread is one of the best ways to celebrate the turning of the wheel. Now, with modern technology, we can make this delicious llama's recipe in under two hours. No more slaving over the warm hearth here. And if you're wondering, is it still witchcraft if we don't make the llama's bread by hand? Of course it is. Good. Okay. Phew, phew, phew. I was, I was worried about being <laughs> alerting the authorities. Yeah, out of compliance. The Industrial Revolution doesn't have to leave witches behind. Of course it is. As you're adding your ingredients to your bread maker, visualize your intent and charge the ingredients. Each time you pass the bread maker or smell the bread breaking, visualize your goal happening right before your eyes. I hope it turns into bread. (laughs) (laughs) It's been 30 minutes. Time to go wave my hands at the bread maker again. (laughs) Don't forget to be bread. All right. I did my job. (laughs) <laughs> crap dinner rolls this isn't correct at all <laughs> <laughs> oh no much like with anything in modern times intention is everything and adaptability is key just check out the modern witch's toolkit it's so good we promise you'll literally ask yourself what is this witchcraft what is this witchcraft <laughs> this it's this bread what is this, this witchcraft? witchcraft? <laughs> what? Is I told you. I told you it was Lemon. bread. What is that, man? Stop what? asking me. No, it's bread. <laughs> yeah. What? <laughs> yes, what is it, Jeff? What are the magical properties of bread machine yeast? Oh, that's a great question that I can definitely answer because I certainly <laughs> haven't closed this window. So no problem. I'm about to tell you. Yeah, one tablespoon of bread machine yeast. Uh, it has the magical properties of... Awakening, epiphany, and optimism. That's yep. right. <laughs> You're so in touch with your bread yeast. Milk powder? Yeah, regular yeast doesn't have epiphany. No, God, no. Just the yeast in the air is full of, like, horrible, nightmarish properties. You know, like, by, like, my seventh or eighth beer, I usually get a lot of epiphanies. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Okay, so with that said, uh, I'm going to tell you about Easy Cthulhu Pot Pies. What? Yeah, Uh, everyone's laughing. That's great. That's what that sound is. (laughs) What? You like this. Uh, You like me. What what website is this from? Oh, you're on the Kitchen Overlord. The Elder Gods, known for their pot pies. Kitchen Overlord. Your home for geeky cookbooks and recipes. We've got in the header, we've got there's a Dune cookbook, there's a entire Cthulhu cookbook, there's dinner with the doctor, 
There's Alien, the official cookbook. Oh my God, I went down the um, rabbit hole. Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, and also there's, it's a, it's a, uh, um, oh, oh boy. Oh, the more I learn <laughs> about this book, the more I like it. Okay, great. <laughs> this is a, it's a cocktail book. It's a cocktail <laughs> book and it's called Steam Drunks. Uh, uh, uh. Wow, that's the sound of laughter. That's how what I'm hearing. Yeah, okay, great. So, okay, here we go. Uh, so this is to make the Cthulhu pot pies, the easy Cthulhu pot pies. Okay, so first of all, two tubes of refrigerated biscuits. Mm. Um, okay, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. We're just, it's, it's, it's because we don't care about that part. We really care about what goes inside. So we're not paying a lot of attention to the biscuits. It's the filling that counts, yeah, right? Yeah, okay. Okay, so one cup of frozen mixed vegetables. Who gives a fuck? Okay, no. uh, I like the stir fry vegetables myself. Whatever. I don't. I literally couldn't care. <laughs> okay. What else? You got? Water chestnuts. Whatever. <laughs> okay. Then uh, you're gonna get a can of. Uh, you're gonna get a can of chicken. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I mean, lemon. That's not descriptive enough. How big is the okay, can? Fine. It's a large can. <laughs> Of cooked chunk chicken, mm. but you do have to drain it. Sorry Gross. about that. Uh, then you're going to get some cream of chicken soup. Whole can of that. Okay. Then you're going to get third a cup of whole milk. Okay. Huh. Then, well, okay. So, so you're, you're wondering like, ah, I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely drowning in your mush. I've got some flavor. <laughs> A teaspoon of pepper. Oh, my God. Oh, that's way too spicy for me. Whoa. <laughs> You're definitely going to taste that. Yes. That's really going to come through. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to basically take some black pepper and then put a large blanket over it. At least it. that's the craziest shit that's in this. You're gonna, you're gonna... Yeah, okay. So then uh, three tablespoons of melted butter, uh, uh, an egg, obviously. That's a, pastry, that's a lot need... of wet ingredients. Still? You know. Oh yeah. well, the next thing isn't a wet ingredient. Then you're gonna have some dried cherries. Oh, oh god! Boy. Just when I thought we were out, they pull us back in. <laughs> uh, it's probably a disgusting amount, like thirteen or fourteen dried cherries. No, just twelve. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> I was wrong. I'm sorry. <laughs> you you think so little of me? <laughs> Uh, okay, so for so in order to make this right, you're gonna mix it together, and then you like simmer it, then you brush the remaining melted butter over the cupcake tins, what? right? Spoon in the filling, just shove it in there, and then you're gonna cut the remaining mashed biscuits into tentacle-like strips. Okay. Uh, you're gonna arrange two cherries on each pot pie for your demon lord's eyes. Okay. okay. God, that's the sound of laughter. Again. <laughs> I love it. Okay, great. And then you're going to arrange four to six long, narrow strips of dough so they dangle from where the horrible apparition's mouth should be. Make sure they stretch a little past the edge of each cupcake mold. Mm, so sure. those are going to burn. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You're going to serve that. You know what? You want to know what to serve this with, right? Oh, yes, yeah. No. This, what's mm -hmm. the wine? Just, oh, just, just, God. Just fucking mush. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. So you're going to serve it with alphabet soup. <laughs> And so, absinthe. Yeah. Okay. Great. I don't know. I prefer Shib Nugarath's hot dish. <laughs> mm. The goat with 1,000 young to feed, you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, Maybe not everybody uh, should have the internet. Good job. Yeah. yeah. Great dreamer pot pie. Okay. So uh, I want to skip. I want to jump back here into the uh, the first document here because we have the second section. Second section put together here by Smallest Sasquatch, and it's called KitchenWitchyHow.com. <laughs> Witchy How. So before we get any further into this, Kendrick, I need you to teach me and then the rest of us. I need you to teach us all about the magical, the magical correspondences of butter. Sure. This is the Butter Materia Magica. Who doesn't love butter? It makes moon cookies flaky. It's delicious in butter coffee and basically vegetarian no. bacon. Um, uh, you know, um, fine, whatever. Popularized sure. yeah. by yeah. bulletproof. I just like I just like frying up a stick of butter for breakfast. Paula Dean yeah. and the internet. Butter holds a beautiful place in the world of McGick. You yeah, know that's fair. Nobody really liked butter before Paula Dean. Well, and but and bulletproof, obviously. Yeah. Oh, I mean, sure. <laughs> and the internet. 
my my two favorite lifestyle brands. <laughs> <laughs> While eating too much can cause heart diseases, it can cause an opening of the heart when used in spells. Mm. Wondering how? Here's our list of magical correspondences and magical properties of butter. This is part of our own Materia Magica. Consider this entry part of the pantry of mag- magical household items. Ah, boy, there's a Ooh, lot of mag so. Which is like Latin. Uh, That's awesome. Uh, so what's the gender of butter? Uh, feminine. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> this cannot uh-huh. be debated. <laughs> Super fair. Super fair. <laughs> Uh, what elements rule butter? Oh, that'd be the water and the earth, mm-hmm. and, and the planets. What are what are the planets? And remember the word that I just used, right? What are the planets that rule butter? Obviously, it's the moon. Okay, okay. Uh, moon. see me That's after funny. class. Sure. <laughs> I'm from the planet Moon. <laughs> the signs that rule butter? Uh, cancer. Cool. Yeah. Whoop whoop. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, the deities that rule butter? Something called Ea, E-A, and the agricultural oh, gods and goddesses. Yeah, oh, just, in arts. just in general. Just in yeah. general. Uh, all of them, you know. Butter is totally pay to play. Yep. <laughs> uh, butter works with your heart chakra, obviously. Sure, clogs yeah, it. Yeah. Um, uh-huh. And it has its own magical properties. Yeah. It smooths and soothes the energies and relationships. Mm. It increases your tenacity, makes change easier, increases spirituality and connections to deities on the physical plane, adds a nurturing, smooth quality to spells. Mm. Does it make them glossy? It's, it's just a magic yeah, lubricant. Exactly. Can, well, <laughs> you say that, it can be an easy <laughs> kitchen witch go-to spell. Simply roll butter uh, in herbs and empower it. Yeah. Uh. It magically stops muffins from sticking to things. But not if you're a man, feminine only. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I'm a man who uses butter. Get out! So, Jack, uh, I'm I'm going to give this one back to you here, but um, you're going to read a recipe, and I just would love you to do me a favor and just don't tell me the name of the recipe, please, until the very end. Yeah, that sounds fine. Remember, remember the magical correspondences. Right, there's some butter in here. I have the butter in here. Uh, yeah, so uh, this is from uh, an anime, uh, and it's from Digimon Adventure Two, the dubbed oh, version oh, only. Oh, good, oh, gotcha. sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right, none of absolutely do not get the subbed version, or it won't work. Sure. And then the serving size for this is a lot, depending on how large you make them. Nice. <laughs> okay. Oh, we're on Tumblr, by the way. This thing has a lot of rewards. Digimon is the champion. Yeah. Uh, okay. So here's the here are the ingredients. Okay. Ingredient number one: oil. Both first, just to cover a pan, and second to deep fry in. Sure. Okay. okay so fry and then fry. Okay, got it. One cup short grain rice. Okay. Around four cups of stock. Could be more That's, or less. Okay. It literally doesn't matter. It doesn't. It could be anything. Like uh, vegetable stock or beef stock or anything? Yeah, just stock. Okay, all right. Just any, sure. My bone broth? Uh, yeah, I think bone broth would work. As long as it's got intention, yeah. Yeah, I mean, obviously. No. Um, two tablespoons of butter. Um, that's to add a feminine quality. <laughs> sure. mm-hmm. uh, two tablespoons of flour. One cup of milk. Mm. Salt. Pepper. Sure. So what do you, the listener, think we're making right now? <laughs> Leave a comment below. Yeah. Pause the podcast. Yeah, 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 yeah. An egg, yeah. breadcrumbs. Yeah. And of course, one cup of chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, thank boy. God. The, the rabies got him. <laughs> so what, what, what is this recipe called? Oh, yeah. This is the, for the uh, chocolate onigiri. <laughs> oh. <laughs> So there's like oh, step by step no. instructions in the Tumblr. So like first you first you try to make a bechamel but don't. <laughs> then you like then you miscook rice. Yeah. Oh, the images uh, of yeah, this. Yeah. Oh, well, they're pretty dire. Now it's is this a, something a, a Digimon would eat? Do they? Not do they? Eat eat humans? Themselves. I don't know enough about Digimon up. because I dislike it a great deal. There's no way someone ate this. 
Yeah, so you so you basically like have this like schlop and then you roll around a race ball like in the schlop. <laughs> uh-huh. And then you cover it in chocolate. It's... No, first you for you roll it around in the schlop, then you deep fry yeah. it, yeah. then you cover yeah. it in chocolate. It's more like an arancini, I guess, but even then, like it's just gloop. Like it's just pictures of chocolate covered gloop balls. Different sludges. Like Digimon like. <laughs> Oh my gosh! Oh yeah, this is this is taken from an arancini recipe. Oh, okay. so it's definitely not a rice ball. <laughs> what? what? Well, there's a, Why would you... <laughs> a lot of people reblogged this. Oh, oh god! Oh god! <laughs> Are there any Beyblade recipes? Because that's what I'm interested in. Someone. <laughs> Someone added, rice balls are simple and delicious. Rice with chocolate sounds heavenly to me for some reason. Because I have a head injury. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. All right. So here we let's uh, let's go back to the other one. I know that we keep getting disgusted. I'm sure that we'll stop going to stop being disgusted if we just keep switching documents. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that seems like a reasonable Absolutely. Lou, uh, tell me about the luscious full moon golden milk. Well, you know how much I love golden and milk together. Mmm, luscious yeah, yeah, yeah. full Ooh, moon that golden mm-hmm. milk recipe. Oh, your your milk is yellow. I'd like mm. to drink it, please. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was an AI this, photo, but I think someone actually went through the work of making This it. cow got into an onion patch. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Warm, smooth, creamy, light, sweet, and perfectly silky. This luscious full moon golden milk. Why is golden the. the <laughs> well, I don't like where the word golden is. In the golden list. than it is milk. Full moon golden milk <laughs> recipe is perfect for sipping during a full moon. The white milk pairs well with the beautiful goddess in the sky for some reason. I thought the milk was golden. Well, the white milk. You'll see. It's the turmeric. This is why you're not drinking. Turmeric reminds us that light always provides power for some reason. Beauty and hope. For some reason. Herbs and spices give this warm milk an earthbound kick. Reminiscent of walking barefoot in the grass. TLDR. If if that was too long for you to read. <laughs> Golden milk is delicious and will help you experience the cosmic and earthly realms in each sip. Also, it's really good for your body, mind, and soul. What is golden milk? Golden milk is a delicious type of mystical. I don't think you answered the question. <laughs> well, so? <laughs> what is golden milk? Yeah, it's, mystical. it's a del- it's a delicious <laughs> mystical. I don't know. It's, it's certainly how not do you pronounce the that shocker. word? <laughs> <laughs> Ayurvedic. Ayurvedic. All right. I think so. Medicine that hails from India, known as warming milk. The health benefits of golden creamy turmeric tea seem endless. Packed with ground turmeric, ginger, coconut oil, maple syrup, and soothing milk. Golden milk helps reduce inflammation, prevent cell death. We're saying, we're saying milk too Boost much. the immune system and more <laughs> milk. <laughs> milk, 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 milk. Is it safe to drink golden milk every day? Absolutely. However, you should Always talk to your doctor or medical provider before taking any new supplements or herbs as they could interact with any pre-existing medical conditions or medications. Hey, Doc, is it okay if I start drinking a lot more milk? Uh, uh, No! No! (laughs) It's herbal. Don't have any turmeric, does it? Because... Yeah, yeah. Basically, it's just milk with turmeric yeah. in it. <laughs> that's that's uh, yeah. spices. Can I use other milks instead of cow's milk? Absolutely. Whatever your diet calls for can be used to make this milk. Simply swap out the cow's <laughs> milk for the same. Milk is so strong it faults out your microphone. For the same amount of your favorite milk. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I really don't 
feel like it's okay to be so reductionist about this just being milk mm. with turmeric in it because it also has coconut Yeah, don't oil. reduce your it milk. Does, it does. Mm. Mm. It seems thick. That will make a mm-hmm. nice, delicious filament. There's all kinds thick. of delicious stuff in this. This sounds delicious, especially if you like milk. Hey, this yellow milk is separated with a layer of oil on top. That's great. I want oh, yes, to drink it. <laughs> yeah, Give people this yellow glass of liquid and tell them it's milk. <laughs> okay, so that's great. Uh, I have another uh, recipe for you. This time, yeah, we're on the gluttonous geek again. I don't need to tell you what it is. I don't need to tell you what it is, but I do need to tell you that you need some ingredients to make this. You're going to need a slap shop. Ooh, <laughs> specifically. Um, Good start. Oh. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so uh, you're about to make some streusel, right? Cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so, so. Of course uh, I am. Yeah, you're about to make some streusel, so you're going to get uh, some hazelnuts, sure. some granulated sugar, yeah. some brown sugar. You on board? Sure. Uh-huh. Cool. Also, crushed Doritos. Oh, come on. <laughs> Which kind? What? <laughs> okay. It say. So you can choose. You can use the yeah, taco absolutely. flavor if you oh. like. Mm. Cool Ranch is fine. I want to use the triangular ones. Okay, okay, that's okay. You can also use, if you want to, you could use the Doritos 3D. You wanna yeah, the 3D. <laughs> that's what I meant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay, so yeah, the Doritos, and then some flour, and then some cinnamon nutmeg, and a stick of unsalted butter, obviously. What? You don't want any salt in there. Yeah, no. Still no. feminine. Mm-hmm. So, uh, <laughs> so that's that's the streusel, and then some pie and filling ingredients. Mm-hmm. Jack, check, you're going to like this. You got mm-hmm. three gala apples. God fucking damn it. Why? <laughs> Why? <laughs> don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. You're going to mix those three gala apples with two Granny Slip Smith apples. No, you are fucking not. You are absolutely not going to cross those apples. <laughs> and then, oh, and then oh, how many apples dare mentioned. you? And then one Golden Delicious mm. apple. <laughs> Let's throw in a honey crisp while you're at it. Why not? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just ruin a fucking honey crisp. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I didn't know we were back on the apple snob. <laughs> that's the exact apple mix you're gonna need. Uh, now you're gonna need some uh, some lemon juice, some bourbon. Sure. Mm-hmm. You're gonna need two tablespoons of pie. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> what? What? What is that? Yeah. <laughs> what is pie? Pie. Pie what a is... la dragon. Con. Oh, yeah, sure, okay. No. Try it on Yo, that. dog, I heard you like pie. Oh, pie is apparently a drink made with apple juice and Everclear. Oh, gosh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Why do we have any other ingredients? <laughs> Everclear. Six, one 64-ounce bottle of apple juice, 12 ounces of Everclear, mulling spices or apple pumpkin spices, <laughs> rum extract, one tablespoon of rum extract, you can sub out six ounces of Everclear for butterscotch snops. Oh, God. Well, same thing. Same Dude. thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then I like the note that they have on this. This is handwritten in a picture. Uh, allow to mellow for a minimum of eight hours after being placed in the <laughs> fridge. Before drinking, shake daily and prior to drinking. So you need to make a 64-ounce <laughs> batch of this drink so that oh you can have- Just get two tablespoons. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, apparently you boil it to, like, distill it down. Jeez. Anyway, okay, so uh, yeah, so put that put that in your pie filling. Stick that in your pie filling. Uh-huh. <laughs> Surprise! Oh boy. Okay. <laughs> so then you're gonna need some 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 more sugar, some cinnamon, some nutmeg, some cornstarch. As for the pie filling, you're gonna need a refrigerated pie crust to put in there. Wait, uh, you're making your own streusel, but you yeah. you aren't making the pie crust. Yep. It's not crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, uh, that's some right. unsalted, some unsalted butter. That's all. It's a pie. <laughs> it's a fucking pie. Mm. <laughs> that was that was called the Captain America apple and Dorito pie. Oh my gosh, yeah. mm. yay! Tell the world what kind of person you are, as a, as though they don't already fucking know. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so uh, we learned about the McGickle correspondences of, well, actually, you know, I think, Dijon, I'd ask you the question. Mm -hmm. Would you like to teach us about the McGickle properties of bananas, the Mm -hmm. McGickle properties of turkey, or the McGickle properties of herbs de Provence? (laughs) Oh, uh, hmm. Well, 
I definitely already know about the magical properties of bananas. I'm okay. well versed with bananas. So Do not ask me about bananas. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. I am unfortunately I have not done a whole lot of like uh, spirit work with turkeys yet. Okay, uh, anytime great. I try to give them reiki, they peck me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sorry to hear that. That's 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 terrible. All right, well, great then. Uh, let's let's learn about the magical correspondences of turkey. So turkey is amazingly delicious. Uh, and just like, uh, yeah. uh, no, <laughs> yeah, no, so that's, flavorful. no, that's what everybody knows about turkey. <laughs> that's why we eat it once a year. Famously. Brown mustard is delicious. <laughs> turkey is the thing that my brown mustard is on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it is a vessel for others. Thank stuff. you. Yeah, no, turkey is absolutely everybody's favorite poultry. <laughs> that's why everyone eats it all the time. All right. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I no, go. I, yeah. That's why I go. Is that turkey bacon? Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I'm your, sorry. Your your must your mustard is flavorful, but <laughs> does it vibrate at a frequency that we can use in magic? Because turkey no, does. No, it doesn't. All right. All right. Mm-hmm. And keep in mind that this article is written for Kitchen m- Magic. All correspondences are meant for culinary enchantments, not sacrifices. Fine. Uh, unbelievable. That away. You know, I wasn't thinking it was about sacrifices, and now I kind of am. <laughs> <laughs> Don't think about sacrifice while cooking your turkey. You'll kill your guests. <laughs> You'll fill it with sacrificial energy. I'm just setting the intention for the evening, sacrificing you all to turkey. <laughs> what a switcheroo this Thanksgiving was. <laughs> So, enchant your turkey as it bakes, or empower your turkey sandwich. Kick <laughs> flow, <laughs> crackling energy flows around the sandwich. <laughs> as with all spell ingredients, especially living ingredients, we recommend thanking the turkey for its nourishment and energy. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Can you please pass the mashed potatoes? <laughs> I'm a sandwich. Here's our list of the magical properties of turkey. Yep. All right. First magical property is the Latin name Melia Grease. Mm, okay. Right. Uh, gender is male, obviously. Mm-hmm. Long Tom Turkey, Long sure, of course. Right. Here's <laughs> the thing that we know about turkey and just all poultry is that it's definitely always male. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's correct. All, every time you eat a chicken or a turkey, you can know that it's male. <laughs> Hand me that mm-hmm. male chicken breast, I will say. <laughs> <laughs> the elements that rule turkey are air and fire. <laughs> <laughs> what? You <know>. Fire? <laughs> You gotta cook it. You know, t- turkeys can fly, and they are dragons. <laughs> okay, that's yep. You got you there. <laughs> the planets that rule Turkey are Mercury and Pluto. Sure. <laughs> that's quite a distance, actually. <laughs> yeah, weird, weird choices. Like, turkey works at extremes. <laughs> well, that makes sense because the signs that rule Turkey is Libra. Oh, the, the deities that rule Turkey are Ceres and Demeter. Okay, so so it's Greek then. Turkey is Greek. <laughs> yeah, sure. They would love to hear that. Yeah, they would love to hear that <laughs> in Turkey. Oh, that's right. They actually would. <laughs> not, an, not at all controversial yeah, statement. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I, I hear you guys are Greek. What am I doing in the back of this van? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Where are we going? Hey, do you guys like magic, McGee? <laughs> I'm gonna need some butter, some Doritos, <laughs> and three pounds of beans. Uh. In Turkey, all the butter uh, is male. What do you think about that? <laughs> uh, the chakras that work with Turkey are the heart chakra and the solar plexus chakra, which I think combined makes the heartburn chakra. Okay. Okay. And Turkey's magical properties are <laughs> ancestry work, increased blessings, increased generosity, inspires harmony, increases motivation, and reinforced traditions. Oh, okay. 
Thank you, Turkey, for nourishing me in my times of hunger. Coming down to the uh, end of both of these documents, I have a game we're about to play. But before Ooh. we get to our game, I think, I think uh, Kendrick, I'm going to give you a choice. Mm. And you get to choose from a couple different sections oh, here. Boy. So from the appetizer uh, section, sure. you can read about egg sandwiches with jam. Sure. Okay. Oh. Mm. Hmm. From the beverages section, there is a uh, unicorn milkshake. Okay, sure. Mm. And then uh, from the dessert section is Babu Frick's droid parts. Boy, all of these are a mm. lot of text. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 I did not give you the option of dung pie. No, no, tarsals. I saw that one. <laughs> um, okay, I think we'll go with. Uh, Boy, there's a lot of text in unicorn milkshakes. Yeah. Wow. Um, yeah, you know what? We'll go with unicorn milkshakes. All right. All right. So uh, we're going to do the unicorn milkshake. So we don't need all of that uh, preamble, but uh, yeah, there sure are a lot of photos. You can kind of imagine wow. what they look like. That is diabetic. Uh, uh, Whoa. Yeah, is Holy diabetic. shit. <laughs> nice. So uh, yeah, I guess let's uh, let's just uh, scroll down to the actual recipe itself, please. <clears throat> there you have it. These are kid tested, sugar hero approved. I hope you'll hop on the unicorn train with me. Here's what you'll need: ten ounces of strawberry coconut ice cream, five large scoops, oh, boy. one cup of strawberries, mm. fresh or frozen, a half <laughs> cup of international delight creamer. You can substitute what? milk. What? What? Wait. <laughs> what? Hey, kids, what are you want to eat creamer? coffee creamer? <laughs> Why? I guess it is sweeter. To be fair, that is sweeter than milk. Yeah. Oh, boy. Can you just use sweetened condensed milk? That would just be even more likely Half to a just kind of destroy or just, me. Or just like a Vietnamese coffee, like an entire one. Half a cup of fruity miniature marshmallows. Jesus. Mm. You just buy those? A quarter mm. cup of vanilla frosting. Fuck! Yum! Wow! Half cup of assorted sprinkles. Why skimp? Mm. Whipped cream. Mm. Decorative toppings like lollipops, rock candy, wafer cookies. Oh, there's a lot of stuff on here. Uh, yeah. Sour strips. Oh boy. This is this is this is wine. Mom has kids. Gravel. <laughs> First, you're gonna combine no, all is, that shit. This is definitely. This is definitely wine aunt because oh, this, yeah. this kid's about yeah. to be sent home with mom. Whoa, it's not even. Yeah, that's <laughs> it's not, that's true. And then wine aunt goes to goes to breakfast. It's not even regular yeah, exactly. delight creamer. It's white chocolate macadamia international delight creamer. So uh, I gave Ashton a little bit of a treat because <laughs> uh, he was so good today. He really did love it. The kid's in the back of the car <laughs> vibrating. He's <laughs> <It was> like, <laughs> 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 got, his, got his shirt over his head like cornholio. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> uh, uh, reminds me of the little okay, goblin kid uh, in my neighborhood. <laughs> Keeps stealing everybody's iced teas. This <laughs> oh man, this is okay. So you're gonna combine the ice cream, strawberries, and white chocolate international delight cream yes. or blender. Oh, how how could I possibly put all these things together? Didn't blend until smooth and creamy. Snip the miniature marshmallows in half. Press oh, what? Why? The cut half of one marshmallow to the inside of a ten ounce glass. So firm. Oh, because nobody who would drink this has any sticks. teeth left. I got it. <laughs> Continue to add the marshmallow polka dots inside the glass. Repeat with oh, a second cup until is. they're both decorated. I could not figure out what that was. I didn't. Yeah, I thought that was in this photo. <laughs> I just thought that was a. I didn't know there was a glass you could see into. I thought it was the pattern painted on the outside. I genuinely. This now it just looks like an alien. Now that I know what it looks like, it looks like an alien disease on the inside of the glass. <laughs> yeah. Spread a thin layer of vanilla frosting around the rim top of each cup. Roll the frosting in sprinkles until it is entirely covered. This is genuinely like two inches of just. It looks sprinkles. like it looks like um like a placenta of a killer clown from a <laughs> yes yeah. yes yeah. yeah it is like a child has vomited from the Skittles mines. But 
Okay. M- applying the the marshmallows on the inside of this glass. This is a, a huge cup, like a wide mouth glass. You get your hand into it to apply these marshmallows individually. This Making this drink takes at least 15 minutes. <laughs> wow. <laughs> There's no way. And you have to lick those marshmallows to make them stick. I'm sorry. God, Gross. <laughs> There's a lot Super that is, <laughs> there's not a lot that turns my stomach. And just the thought of this is. Hold on. Andy's adding the marshmallows. <laughs> I got to snip each marshmallow individually one by one. <laughs> okay. So the last thing uh, that Neil has here, oh, once again, uh, Neil gave us the uh, sorcery banquet and uh, smallest Sasquatch gave us the uh, millennials co- learn to cook with fan recipes. I think I got that wrong at one point in the podcast. But the last section here is called Do Not Season Beelzebub. So F+, plus, Neil wants to say, here's the trick. The premise of the magical recipes on Plentiful Earth is that every ingredient imaginable has magical properties, and casting a spell via cooking is just a matter of combining the ingredients and you have the arcane qualities you want. Mm. Therefore, you can hack your own spells in the kitchen if you know what ingredients do what. So Neil says that every single recipe on the site includes the magical qualities of each ingredient. And so I'm going to uh, tell you a ingredient, and I need you to tell me the magical properties. Does Got that sound it. good? Mm-hmm. Great. All right. So Dijon. Yes. Uh, we already learned about carrots. So I'm not going to give you that. We already learned about butter. Obvious. But so I think we're going to go. Twice. Yeah, there is carrots is on there twice, hmm. and it's completely different lists. <laughs> <laughs> Both huh. times. What? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Absolutely. So uh, what are the magical properties of baking soda? Baking soda. There are three. I will take one. All right. Uh, I'm going to give you growth. No, I'm sorry. The (laughs) baking, it's purification, cleansing, cleansing and banishing. Obviously cleansing. It's right there. What? Come on. Come on. Come on. That's true. That's that's the reason you put baking soda in your muffins is so they aren't filthy. (laughs) Mm -hmm. (laughs) Harlot! (laughs) (laughs) All right. Kendrick, uh, I need the magical properties of dried time. Time. Not not fresh time. Dried time. Yeah. Dried time. Um, Longevity. Longevity is a very good guess. No, I'm sorry. Uh, beauty, happiness, strength, and protection. Huh. Mm. Beauty. beauty. Huh? <laughs> yeah, beauty. beauty. Yeah, absolutely. Jack Chick, what are the properties of frozen peas? Oh, Fritters. yeah. I always I always use frozen peas for strength. Strength? No, you're wrong. You're wrong. You use frozen peas for self-awareness. And fritters. Frozen. And prosperity. (laughs) Frozen green beans will also give you prosperity, but in addition to that, they'll give you psychic ability. (laughs) (laughs) Eating that casserole from earlier and having like one of those flashbacks from It's So Raven. (laughs) My eyes roll in the back of my head. I thought the uh, frozen frozen peas were good for, uh, you know, covering up a black eye after... (laughs) <laughs> after you got after you got mouth pitch itch. white like a mint tat <laughs> <laughs> so i use a lot of salt in my cooking and i'm really not sure what intentions i should throw behind it oh well that depends um <laughs> are you so are you using <laughs> there's a couple different categories right so so you're, yeah. you're saying salt yeah. When you're saying salt, do you mean salt or well, yes. salt parentheses kosher or oh. salt parentheses <laughs> kosher? Because there's different. Sure, secular Orthodox. <laughs> so mm. different. Mm. <laughs> For all three. I'm going to go with salt parentheses kosher. Gotcha. Well, depending on which one, it was either purification or cleansing. <laughs> no. <laughs> Oh my god. Okay. And then hey Lou, what's uh what's uh the magical properties of white sugar? Um it's not diabetes. It is happiness. You know, uh no, no, oh. I, no, you know, it's it's sometimes, you know, it's a little bit magic is hard, right? And so like sometimes the answer is actually right there. Because the actual magical properties of white sugar are sweetness. No <laughs> <laughs> What? <laughs> It's right there, man. Damn it. <laughs> it's right there in front of you. It's a trick question. <laughs> I'm furious. 
All right. Actually, you know what? Before the end, uh, Jack Chick, uh, scroll down to the very bottom of the sorcery banquet here because I want to. I want to uh, summon the Sawen Guardian. Um, uh, can you just give me just the instructions on uh, on how we can do that? Absolutely. Uh, use a permanent black marker. Draw a pinnacle on the bottom of the pumpkin. Okay. Place the pumpkin near your front door. Make sure not to leave it on concrete because it will rot faster. Hmm. Uh, okay. Oh. When the moon rises. Hold the pumpkin in your arms and repeat the following. Precious pumpkin, watch over my home, protecting from bane all you behold. By the power of this fruit in the pal moonlight, shield us from harm both day and night. <laughs> no notes. Not a single note. Get out of here, moonlight then pal. You leave your enchanted pumpkin as your watchful guardian beside your front door. Huh. To complete the spell, carve no more than one day before Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> don't forget to save some seeds for magic in the yeah. future i want my guardian to be something my... a teenage kid can pick up and throw <laughs> a very weak teenage kid at that point make sure not to leave it on concrete because it'll rot faster how long does it fucking take this guardian to show up man <laughs> right do it i think it's just a guardian because it's a spooky pumpkin I like that you have to draw on the bottom with a permanent <laughs> magic marker. People are like, I'm not going to that house. They got a spooky pumpkin. You wouldn't want them. You wouldn't want the pentagram to get rubbed off. From the preamble to that uh, spell, there's the story of of the origin of, of Halloween. And the origin of Halloween is that Stingy Jack was a very stingy blacksmith who enjoyed playing tricks on mm. people. Hence why trick-or-treating is now a thing for Halloween. Jack even wound up tricking the devil. Eventually, when Jack mm. died, heaven, heaven definitely did not want the trickster. And the devil had too much spite towards Jack to allow what him into hell. What the hell? So he was forced to walk stupid. the earth. Oh, <laughs> Damn. okay. He was doomed from the start. His parents named him Stingy. Yeah, what? Of all of the, of like, what? Why Stingy? Why, like, why is Stingy? The father the took one stuck? look at the baby and was like, this one's Stingy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, kid, give me a dollar. Ah, fuck. <laughs> Maybe his parents really liked bees. Stingy. Oh, stingy. Stingy, <laughs> stingy Jack. <laughs> stingy Jack. Come here, these but are that your brothers story and sisters continues, being forced to stone. walk the earth, Jack took a turnip and hollowed it out, placing coal that the devil gave him inside. And then is not referenced again. Like, why? Happy Halloween. Hope you have your coal-filled turnip. <laughs> well, men can't have Therefore, hobbies? Halloween. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well it's i mean that sentence was for the seo oh god a here comes of, jack with his turnips oh yeah long tail best turnip store number one turnip store turnip store near me <laughs> colon's died turnip <laughs> do what have to it? say I, I would I'm, I would feel very safe if uh, one Halloween, one Halloween, my mom just went out and took a burning turnip and hugged it while mumbling something. <laughs> <laughs> Mommy's doing fine, honey. Mommy's doing fine. Now. Mommy's doing okay. Get back in the house. Mommy's doing okay. Get back in the house. <laughs> Precious turnip, watch over my home. <laughs> <laughs> what did uh, what did we learn from these documents? <laughs> Plus, I learned I'm not as bad a cook as I thought I was. Mm. Mm, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I learned about hot turnips in your area. <laughs> <laughs> turnips near you. I hear that. I hear uh, that ugly turnips want to fuck. <laughs> 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 this is all so dumb. <laughs> I, uh, I learned that there are a lot of logs from like the uh, early 2010s that are geeky cooking mm, blogs. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I learned it's butter for the well, like, ladies, turkey for the men. <laughs> I well, because the thing is, is like I feel like I feel like all of them realize together. That like there is because there is probably a gold mine in being the one person that actually manages to corner the market on geeky cooking blogs, but you know that didn't happen. <laughs> um, but on the other hand, geeky sex toys is definitely yeah a, right. That's, yeah. that's a cornered mm -hmm. market. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, no, I, th I, th I uh, all of the ones that I've gone here have, have seemed like they all just like made cookbooks that like they like self printed. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Which, like, I mean, honestly, you would think that the, that what you would do is basically, like, take a regular old recipe and just, you know, it's like, oh, uh, it's the yeah. fucking yeah. Call, call of Duty drink or whatever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, but instead, it's like, no, this is the Master Chief Mojito. Yeah. It's got rum, Mountain Dew. <laughs> Harry Potter's pretzels wand. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. I also learned that uh, you know we've 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 struggled with uh, over a while of like, boy, our hopper keeps getting longer. But like, mm-hmm. shit, if we can just bang out two a night, right? <laughs> <laughs> just just efficient podcasting. That's all Sim- that is. Similar yeah. worlds. I have to figure out all the pairs. <laughs> it's a match two game. Uh, and if you can think of a pair of documents we should read, you could go to Ball Pit. You could, you know what? I don't even want to open that door because, like, if if I yeah, don't go to, to get... fucking Ball Pit, yes. Yeah, no, I do. I do want you to go to Ball Pit. What I don't want you to do is go. Like, eh, you really should read this one. You really should read this one. You know, so, you know, Lemon. I feel like you're you're sending a lot of mixed messages out to the I listeners. Am, I am and sending out a lot of mixed messages. I feel like, like, like you could. What do you? What you, you could manifest a greater? You need to greater audience. Tomorrow? Set Dexter. a greater what intention. Tomorrow, what are you doing tomorrow? Tomorrow, I'm busy. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> Our website, THEFBL.us. Yeah, bye. Bye. Bye.